John uh, Point Baptiste de Sabo was the first permanent non-native settler in this area. So he's considered the founder of Chicago. There's little information about de Sabo actually. Um, the information that's available, people believe that he was of Haitian heritage, that his mother was African, his father was French, and uh, that he was born in Haiti uh, in the mid 1700s. Here in Chicago, he was a trader. He was a married man, married um, a woman that's called Kitty, who was of native heritage. And yeah, he came through um, travel trading, and then he settled here in this area. He was the first, again, the first permanent non-native settler. When you go downtown in the area where the river walk is, the Chicago River, that's where he set, that's where his uh, trading post was and the area that he settled in. And it makes common sense because that's what traders did in the day. The, the way, the mode of transportation was the waterway and so it makes sense that he would have located his space, you know, his permanent space near the water. Well, Chicago is called the Sabo Land, right? Especially back in the 60s, Chicago was known as the Sabo Land it, because it was uh, unique in that it was founded by a black person. So people were very proud of that. Dr. Margaret Burroughs, she was an educator she was an artist and a renaissance woman in every regard. So Dr. Burroughs created the museum. The museum started in her house over on 38th and Michigan. And she had, um, she was a collector. So she had all these items. She had all of these items in her house. And then she and some friends uh, moved the museum and ultimately it ended up in this location. This is the 60th anniversary of this museum. Currently in the DuSabo Museum, we have exhibits on, uh, of course, Founders Hall. Then we have things on Dr. Margaret Burroughs, since she's a founder here. And then we have uh, the current exhibits. We have 1919, the Chicago Race Riots. We have an exhibit on that. We have an exhibit on um, Freedom and Resistance, which kind of tells the whole history of Africans in America and this slavery and then all the historical periods we traveled through uh, to, to the current time. We have that. We have Harold Washington, the first African American mayor of Chicago. We have an exhibit on him. We have some things on World War I. The African Americans who served in this country, they don't get a lot of attention. So here we have an exhibit on there and a special unit that was based in Chicago. So we have that history here. Um, yeah, we have a lot of great things. We currently have a great exhibit called The March that was brought to us by Time and Viola Davis, the actress and her husband. It is phenomenal. And it's um, virtual reality. So you put on headgear and then you actually travel to the March on Washington, the 1963 March on Washington, and you hear the Dr. King present his I Have a Dream speech and you have a front row seat basically at that march. Those are the current exhibits we have here and they're always changing. We have special programming here at DeSabo all the time. We have jazz night, live jazz music. We have comedy. We have house music. We have stepping. All of those things on the plaza which we consider extensions of teaching tools. Much like uh, its namesake, we're named for John Baptiste Point du Sable, how he was unique, a phenomenal person. Du Sable Museum is named in that tradition and functions in that tradition. It is the, the oldest uh, independent African American museum in the country, and the work we do attends to the African American perspective through the African American. Uh, lens and place in this broader context of world history. And so it's an exciting place, it's a unique place, and much like Chicago, many people who migrated to Chicago, they came here because it was founded by a black man. And we 
work at DuSable. I came to DuSable Museum to work because it gives attention to the African-American perspective.